The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, Heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, declaring, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's stand and sing together. Creator blessed, and in our hearts take up thy rest. Come, to fill the hearts which thou hast made. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Please sit them down. (laughs) Did you like that one, sit them down? (laughs) There is a lot in our lives that is there to depress us and bring us down. I don't want to be one of those forces in your life to bring you down, but to pick you up, of course. Uh, I didn't have such a good night because uh, I had to go give the last rites uh, to a 49-year-old gentleman who died last night and it uh, is never easy especially as I'm there to pray over him and his wife says to me father can you bring him back of course she and her children are now experiencing the hour of death, not physical death in the sense that he died, but their own death inside. Hmm? They're being killed inside. That's why we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And then we also add, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The hour of death comes when you experience something like that. Hmm? You're dying inside. You've all experienced that. When you get a cancer diagnosis, when you discover your child is on drugs, when you lose your job, when you lose your loved one, when you find out your husband is cheating. All of those things are hours of death. And that's where we need reminders. And today's feast of the... Today's feast of the baptism of the Lord is a reminder. That's why we use 
holy water. Every day you should be dipping your fingers in holy water and crossing yourselves as a reminder, a little bit of the holy water. Don't be like the, the guy who in one of the parishes I was at uh, would come after me running with gallons and gallons. He wanted me to bless gallons of holy water all the time. I don't know what the heck he was doing with the, with the, with the holy water. Uh, but one time I'm in Walmart and he's running after me with the gallons. Father, bless my holy water or bless my water. And I said, no, this can't continue. You know, I mean, I, I need to have a life. And it's, and it's hard to have a life when everybody knows where you live. It's one of the bad things of living right next to the parish. Because uh, they come at every hour of the day. Father, what are you doing? Trying to live. <laughs> and so I said, this can't, this can't continue. I can't live like this, you know, with the guy coming after me with gallons. So I said, listen, Jimmy, okay? Invite me over to your house and I will bless your faucet. <laughs> now, I won't tell you if I did it or not. You think I'm capable? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know me by now. <laughs> I said, you have lords in your house. Lords, Jimmy, you know. You have a blessed faucet. <laughs> Don't be inviting me over to bless your faucets now. Okay? Because <laughs> I can just see it. But you know, all of this is because we need our holy reminders. You do understand that we are all Jews, just baptized Jews. Jesus wasn't Catholic. I got news for some people, you know. <laughs> he wasn't a Christian either. He was Jewish. This is the Passover meal, the Holy Mass that we celebrate here. Huh? Everything that we do. Why do we hang a cross up in our homes? Well, remember the serpent lifted in the desert? You look at the cross, you know that just like the serpent was lifted in the desert, and the serpent was that which was biting the people of Israel, killing them, filling them with poison. When you look at the cross, you get reminded, a, a, a reminder that everything that has the power to kill you or poison you, has already been crucified. In other words, it's all been killed. So whatever it is that comes in my daily life to kill me, to poison me, it's already been destroyed, even death itself. That's why it's all a reminder. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. Because it's all to remember. Because every day you wake up a pagan. You wake up a pagan every day. Forgetting who you are. Forgetting that God is with you. And if God is with you. Who can be against you? You forget. That's why you need reminders. You need that holy water. Now you don't need gallons of it. Okay. But you need it. To remind yourself that you have been baptized, that everything, everything that could have ever destroyed you or kill you or poison you has already been killed. You've been submerged in the water. Hmm? That you're okay. It's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. Hmm? So we use all of these things you know, somebody took a, uh, they take my homilies away, you know, move my papers. Uh, people, what can I say? <laughs> you know, we all need those reminders to calm me down at the mass at, at nine o'clock. You know, uh, the, the telephones keep ringing. Two people answered their phone at mass. Two people. Can you imagine that? You know. Here I am, you know, I mean, I don't take this stuff out of my nose, you know, not to say out of somewhere else, okay? You know, I, 
I work hard to prepare my sermons and everything else. And then somebody comes, you know, sits them down in, the, in a comfortable chair and then proceeds to answer their phone. How rude, how disrespectful. What is that saying? You know, I could care less about all the effort that you've put forward, you know. Um, and so how is it that I'm able to get through all of this? Well, I put on this alb that my grandmother made for me and it injects me with that energy that I need in order to be calm. Because mm -hmm. you think that I like everybody here? <laughs> Some people, they're, as, they're, as they're coming, it's like... <gasps> Oh, there it goes again, you know, and I know what they're going to say before they open their mouth. <laughs> so we need that energy. We have to have an infusion of energy. Why do you think you come to receive the body of Christ in the wine here and the blood of Christ? Because you need a blood transfusion for no longer to have your own blood, but the blood of Jesus. You need Jesus' life in you. Now, today we are celebrating the baptism of the Lord. Jesus was baptized in water, huh? not in beer. Huh? <laughs> not in Coca-Cola, but in water. Water for the Jews was something that had a very special meaning because this was the desert. It wasn't easy to come upon water. Huh? Water was precious. It was a treasure. It symbolized life. We, we don't get it because, you know, you, you, we live in, in the United States of America. You go take a shower like uh, I'm sure all of you did today, you know, like I did uh, uh, yesterday, I took my weekly shower. Uh, you know, I always do. I take a weekly shower, whether I need it or not. But uh, uh, we, don't, we don't get the symbolism. We don't get it. Because we open up the water and there it comes. And it's clean water. That's why it always gets me. You know, all the people who drink all the uh, garbage instead of drinking water. Drink water. Kathy knows this because in Crescent City, when my grandma uh, stayed with me, she was an enemy of drinking water. She was like, stop drinking water. Because when she was growing up in Poland during the Second World War and after, water got you sick. Mm -hmm. We don't get how precious water is here. So, in the Bible, water for the Jews was a symbol of the devil living in the waters, the, the monsters in the waters, evil spirits. And Jesus walks on the water. He walks over all the evil that could destroy you, that could harm you. He's walking on top of it. And it's no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. So it's Jesus walking in you, in your body, walking over the evil. You get it? Huh? You're walking over the evil. And Peter begins to drown because the devil, those evil spirits are, they're, they're taking him in into the water, below the water. And Jesus extends his hand to Peter and says, walk, Peter, walk over all those evil forces. Hmm? The same thing he's doing to each and every one of us extending his hand to us and saying, walk over all of that is trying to bring you down. Walk! 
You can do it. Alone you can't. But I'm with you. And remember, I'm with you. You will be just fine. What is wrong with you? Huh? He's saying, <clears throat> a little slap now and then is a good thing huh? for us. Everything will be just fine. The Israelites knew that God used water in the flood of Noah in order to wash away the sins. Your sins have been washed away, all of your sins. Huh? The Israelites knew because they knew the stories that God parted the Red Sea and that which could kill them didn't. They walked in the midst on dry land. Everything is going to be just fine. Huh? God saved his people in the past, and God continues to save his people today. Baptism is precisely this. It is a walk in the midst of the waters, in the midst of everything that is trying to kill you. Hmm? Oh, yeah. You know, you can clean everything, but you cannot clean water. Have you ever tried to clean water? You can't clean water. But Christ even cleaned water. Uh -huh. He cleans water. Those smelly waters of the Jordan, and I've been there, so believe me, they're smelly and dirty. I, you know, they were trying to get me to go in there, and I was like, oh. Okay. People were drinking it and everything else. You know, it's like um, in some of the churches, they have these big baptismal fonts, okay, all over. And uh, uh, everybody comes into the, uh, comes into the, to the church and they, <laughs> and they, and they drink those waters. And one time uh, I saw somebody come in and they were like cleaning their hair in there and everything in those baptismal fonts. You know, if they could, they'd probably even put their, um, their gluteus maximus in there. Or whatever. And then somebody else came after and took a cup and started drinking. <laughs> okay, so God in Jesus cleans the water. Hmm? And is asking you in your own life to submerge yourself in those waters as well in order to live as well in your own life how can we do that well you have to hear what happened at the baptism of jesus what happened at his baptism i just read it but you've already forgotten because you're thinking about lunch or whatever else. <laughs> the heavens opened and God the Father declares, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. You know that I visited prisoners at Pelican Bay State Prison for three years while I was pastor in Crescent City, California. And in one of those uh, Masses that I celebrated there. I celebrated Mass on the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, which we have today. And I said to the guys who were there, most of them in their early 20s, I said, the same thing that happened at the baptism of Jesus happened at your baptism when you were baptized. The heavens opened. And God, your father, declares, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. God is pleased with you, I said. God loves you just the way you are. The fact that you're in prison doesn't make God love you any less. God loves you. God died for you so as to not to have to live without you. And afterward, one of the young men, 22 years old, comes up to me and says, I hated everything you said today. Because everything you said is not true.
Nobody has ever been pleased with me, he says. Nobody has ever taken delight in me. And least of all, my own father. It's no wonder that he ended up in prison, incarcerated for life. It's no wonder that he was suicidal. Nobody ever blessed him. All he heard throughout his life were curses, mm -hmm. like you did. You're no good. You won't amount to anything. You're ugly. You're this, you're that. And you fill yourself with those curses. And God wants to fill you today and every day with his blessings. How do we bless? With words. Benedicere. Good speech. Good words. You curse people by sucking energy out of them. That's what the devil wants to do. The devil wants to curse you. Maledicere. Hmm? It's like when the child is playing and has all this energy build up and the mother's there in the house with the child and he breaks something and the mother says, look at you, you never do anything right. Look what you just did. You spilled this or you broke this. You suck their energy out. You kill their energy. Hmm? That's what we do to each other. We play the role of the devil. And God wants to bless you. So I looked at that young man as I want to look at each and every one of you today. And I said to him, well, I am pleased with you. I take delight in you. And I love you. That's why I'm here. And I'm very proud of you, I said to him, because you could have chosen not to come to Mass today, but you did. I'm very proud of you. And this suicidal young man, because most of the inmates die from suicide at Pelican Bay, that's why most of them are in their early 20s, because as they progress on, unless they find God, they kill themselves. That's the number one cause of death there, or they go crazy. After that, after I blessed him, he started drawing And this is one of his one of his pictures that he drew for me. And he drew many, many more. Uh, and you can see in the back here it says Pelican Bay State Prison. Okay, and I've got lots of letters here from many, many and pictures and pictures galore. I've got boxes and boxes, because some of them they still keep writing to me. Mm. He's still alive because he was blessed. He was injected with the energy that I want to inject into you to keep going, to walk. And walk where? Over the water. Crush the head of the devil hmm? in your life. Walk. God is with you. You're baptized in water, sealed with the Spirit. What more do you need? Hmm? Everything is going to be all right. Hmm? Bob Marley. Every little thing is going to be all right. <laughs> hmm? It will all be fine. You'll be fine. Okay? That's why we come to church, to get injected with that energy. Hmm? God is with you, so who can be against you? Walk on the water. Hmm? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.